Welcome back, everybody. You are listening to the Sales on Demand Show. I am your host, Adam Schneider. This is episode nine or three, nine three figures, nine three, um, and we are talking about printing your own products at home. So, I will completely recognize and admit that this is a very kind of unconventional um, way to do things, and honestly, I kind of debated whether I was even going to talk about this, but because I've kind of gotten into this now in a more serious way, and I'm really starting to build this up, I decided, well, you know, let's talk about it. Plus, I have had a flood of people just basically demanding that I tell them everything that I have been doing with printing my own products at home. Um, So, uh, here we go. We're going to talk about it. Um, Next episode, I plan to talk about hiring virtual assistants and hiring people locally. So, I plan to do a, a bit of a series on that. But in this particular time frame, I'll talk about, you know, the process that I'm using to print some of my own products at home. Um, 99% of that is for Amazon FBA. Right, so uh, what am I up to these days? Well, I'm trying to stay away from social media. Um, It's hard. Um, Right now, there is just so much just craziness on, on social media. It's just nuts. There's this massive culture war going on right now, and it's it's hard not to get kind of caught into that. But really, like, what what does any of us gain from fighting the culture war online? I mean, I don't know. I, I'm just finding it kind of fruitless myself. I understand that a lot of people are passionate about it, but I'm just it's it's a distraction for me. There's so many other things I could be doing, and I'll, I find myself on Twitter arguing with random people. So why? Ah, Okay, so I need to take a break from social media, especially Twitter. Um, It's hard to take a break from Facebook because I, you know, that's where a lot of my business stuff is. But, um, you know, I've unfollowed a few people, so that's helped. Also, um, tomorrow i got to put my cat down, so kind of bummed out about that. He's a a good cat. He's 14 years old. So it's, he's finally reached the end of his, his days and he's, uh, He's fought hard, he's fought a good fight, um, and he's he's going to go to the Rainbow Bridge, if that means anything. Um, so yeah, it's been a it's been a weird week, not not a very fun week for me, but um, you know life goes on, and uh, spring is coming, so I keep kind of keep my eye on the prize, right? A lot of things are going really well for me, so even if some things are hard. It's it's the kind of hard where you know you're going to be okay. Uh, you just have to get through it. And uh, you just have to grit your teeth and, and push through. Kind of like running. You know, where you know you can run 10 kilometers and you're like, well, I'm going to run a couple more. And you're like, okay, I know I can do this, but it's going to hurt. It's going to suck. So that's kind of where I am at the moment. So what is selling? Um... Well, things are kind of getting back to something that looks like a normal quiet volume. So there's there's obviously the Christmas volume where there's just sales going out the door like crazy. But right now, there's a lot of evergreen sales that are going on. And I have been noticing that even though I went back to a normal volume of sales, um I basically have achieved a new level, and I'm I'm never going to be dropping below that level as long as I keep working and doing what I'm doing. So that's good. Um, But, of course, Valentine's Day and Mother's Day and Father's Day are coming up, and I am working my tail off to get ready for that. Of course, um, if you want to know what I do and how I do it, I do have a lot of content. Some of it's free. This podcast is free, but I do have a paid training program. Now, unfortunately, the discount for that program has expired. If you didn't catch it, um, by the end there, there was three or four people that that got in just under the wire, so welcome to you guys. Um, The group is growing. Uh, My email list is growing. It's it's awesome. I love it. Um, I guess I'm just just plugging away, and, and people are finding great value out of it, but... 
let me tell you what I'm going to be adding to my my personal training program. I am going to be adding an entire segment segment on how to print your own mugs at home. Um, th- just enough people have said that they want that that I'm going to be adding it to the training. So you're literally getting print on demand A to Z, every possible way that you could sell print on demand, including making your own products, which in my opinion, I mean, I guess it's print on demand because you're printing it yourself, but it's not the easy way of doing it where someone else prints it for you. If you do your own, um, it's it's a little bit different, but there's a lot of people want to know how to do it, and I've kind of got a good process going here, so we will talk about that. Um, and of course, I'll talk about it in this episode. Now, if you want to know more about my training program, you're going to want to visit salesondemandshow.com forward slash AZ. AZ. That's where you're going to go. All right, so um, should you print your own mugs? I wanted to start with this question because I think it's an important question. A lot of people want to do things that they shouldn't do. And uh, honestly, there are there are good and bad to this. So I'm going to I'm going to be really honest with you guys in this episode. I'm not going to pull any punches on some of the difficulties of doing your own products at home. And and many of you may decide for yourself that now nah, this isn't really worth it and maybe I shouldn't do it. And and that's kind of what I'm going for. Um, I've always been very honest with you. I'm not trying to sugarcoat any of this, right? Have I ever told you that this is like super easy and that you can do it in your sleep and that you just need to click these seven buttons and the cat starts pouring in? No, of course not. This is a business and business can be challenging. What I have told you is the truth, that this is a much easier way to make money than opening up a restaurant or trying to sell auto parts to people or you know, trying to open up an auto body shop. Although, I mean, opening up an auto body shop, you probably make quite a bit of money. Uh, It's just hard work. It's a lot of hard work. And this is, quite frankly, it's easier. It's one of the easiest businesses I've I've ever seen. Uh, But it is a business, and it does require some work. Mostly sitting in front of your computer work. But it does require some, some work, and some thinking, and some planning, and... Uh, printing your own mugs is something that you can do, and it it is kind of intriguing. It really captures people's attention because, you know, the one thing that I've always hated about uh, print-on-demand, and it's the one thing that you both love and hate, is that you're not actually making your own products. I mean, you're designing them, so it almost feels like you're cheating, like someone else prints it, and you think to yourself, well, is this really my product? Am I making this if I'm not actually printing it? I mean, I've sold thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands thousands of products that I've never even laid my hands on, and I like that. Um, honestly, the, the fact that I don't have to do it allowed me to do all the selling while I was still working full-time and doing a whole bunch of other jobs at the same time. So that was great back then. But now, this is my, this is my livelihood, and... I want to take it to the next level. And for me, the next level is bringing some of my production into my own sphere. So I have influence over it, and I can control a lot of that. And then expanding to a few other places. And I'll talk about how I'm expanding and where I'm expanding to and how that's going so far um, as we get along here. So there are, like I've said, I've had loads of people who really just want to know more about this they want to know what I'm doing and how I'm doing it that the the precise products that I'm using and I will share that with you guys so of course there are tons of little Etsy shops that do exactly what I'm talking about now they run their own sublimation and they're quite profitable um they a lot of people have been doing this um for quite some time in fact, print on demand really started with people doing their own stuff, and then it was only, you know, in the last five to six years that these print shops started doing drop ship for print on demand. And in fact, of course, I had a guest on the show, the only guest that I've had on the show so far, um, Travis Ross, who is, you know, doing his own 
printing, and he's actually given me quite a bit of good advice on some packaging stuff that um, um, he's doing with his product. So he is doing basically what I'm doing, kind of in reverse. He he has never done print on demand with uh, like a supplier. He's always been his own supplier. So for him, um, this is normal. This is the way to do it. For me, I've always had someone else doing the supplying for me, and I, that's that's easy. You know, it, it's easy to just click a button and order. 36 mugs from a supplier, put in the shipping labels, and you're done. And then the, the mugs get shipped and, you know, printed and shipped off to Amazon, and boom, there you go. And before Christmas time, of course, um, you got to plan it out in, in advance because it takes time for them to, to print and ship, and sometimes there's mistakes. And um, quite, quite frankly, this year, I, I've noticed that one of my suppliers, just the boxes that they're using are not sufficient for Amazon FBA and I've decided that I'm going to take take that supply and, and bring it in house and that was kind of one of the the reasons for it is that I have more control over the process and there won't be any or fewer mistakes. So let's talk about the pros. You know, the the positive benefits of printing your own mugs or printing any other product that you might want to print because it's not just mugs that you can print um, you can do other kinds of items too um, mugs are just the easiest one for me to do and they're easy to find so that's what I recommend starting with just like when you start doing print on demand the normal way you know starting with white mugs is the easiest way to do it they are the most popular so of course one of the the first is that you have control over the process and that there will be fewer mistakes so I noticed this year that I had um, a fair number of mugs that went out that weren't printed very well. So they were faded around the edges. Um, there was just some printing errors, and I and I was kind of irritated with that. Although, it's fairly easy to manage that. You, you basically just say, I'm sorry for that. Um, I'll replace it for you. Now, this isn't that big of a problem. I I know a lot of people get freaked out when this happens. It's easy to manage this. You do not have to print your own products to manage mistakes. You just fix the mistake and make the customer happy. However it takes, whatever it takes to make the customer happy, you do that. In most cases, offering them a replacement is all you need to do. So, you know, when you buy a product from a print-on-demand warehouse like Custom Happy and they make a mistake and they don't do a good job, they'll replace it for you for no cost. And they'll send it, you know, the replacement will be shipped with fast shipping, and it's just a, that's their promise. They, they guarantee that it's going to be a good product. Um, so that's that's good enough. Um, on the other hand, if you're sending for FBA, for Amazon, you don't really have any way, like if something gets printed incorrectly, you don't have any way to get a refund for that because you won't even see it. It just gets printed and boxed up and shipped to Amazon, and if the customer gets it, um, and it's broken or it's misprinted, they're just not going to be happy with it. They're going to return it to Amazon. You're out the money. So having a little more control over the process is nice, especially for FBA, because that's where that's where a lot of the money is. Like there's lots of money in FBA. And this year I've decided that that's how I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to double or triple my Amazon sales by testing way more products. So, of course, fewer mistakes is one of the, the benefits. Um, faster turnaround is another benefit. Um, so, you instead of you know waiting for three months for a print shop to print your products and ship them to Amazon or, or whatever, um, if you're doing print on, you know, actual print on demand where customers are ordering one product and you're printing the one product, well, you could potentially ship that out the same day. Um, so that's kind of cool, and customers might like that. Um, you know, it, it's not always possible, but think about this. Okay, we'll talk about the cons, but you don't necessarily want to be promising one to two day turnaround, you know, particularly on the weekends, because they're going to be sitting there just doing this every single day, seven days a week. And maybe you're, maybe you like that. Maybe that's something that you enjoy. I don't want to be married to my business. I want to be able to, you know, 
just hand over some of the, the reins to someone else and, and have some time off. I have other things I like to do. I like to work out. I like to spend time with the kids. I want to spend time with my wife. I want to, you know, watch a movie or something now and then. Um, so I don't want to always be working. So that's not necessarily a, a pro, but you can definitely get more sales if you have fast turnaround. Um, maybe, maybe. Um, so we'll talk about that as well. So it is cheaper to print your own stuff than it is to buy printed products. So um, now that also is depending on a lot of different factors. So it's it's cheaper if you don't dis if you don't count your own time, right? So for example, I, I'm paying right now a dollar fifty Canadian for every coffee mug, which is I don't know about a dollar twenty U.S. So a dollar twenty is it's pretty cheap. I can get them cheaper from China if I buy like a crate or a pallet of them. Um, I think the minimum is two thousand to to get the cheap price from China. So I'm, I'm probably going to do that. But then then I have. 60 boxes of mugs in my garage so it's it's a bit of a, a challenge there so um, if you don't count your own time then you do make more profit but you do spend more time now on the other hand it can be cheaper if you if you have a family member uh, maybe you have a family member that doesn't have anything going on right now and you know they want some work they want to do something with their hands get them printing some mugs for you um, plus it's kind of fun i mean it's when i first got the printer and everything like that i was like oh man i am going to make myself some mugs and i did and i made some mugs for myself i made one for my grandfather i made one for my parents um you know and i used you know pictures full color pictures of the grandkids and it was a, a nice little gift for them for christmas um, i even you know shipped it to them using my you know, personal packaging. And it arrived intact, no breakage. So that was that was good. Um, so that is one of the things that kind of makes it fun. It, you know, making your own products, it's fun. And you have the hands-on, you know, I'm, I'm actually making this. It, it is a little bit more satisfying to do that. Now, of course, that might have been a good thing to do when, during this Christmas, when things kind of went off the rails. Um, would have been nice to have the ability to print some of my own products myself. So um, I have used my own printing press, I guess you could call it, to send out some replacements. Um, I've been also, in addition to s sending gifts to my family, uh, you can also sell, sell locally. So if a local business wants, you know, 30 coffee mugs with their logo on it, you can advertise to them and say, hey, I will print your logo on coffee mugs and you can make some money. Now, you might have to give them a discount. That's the that's the problem, right? You know, they they probably will not want to pay more than like, you know, seven, eight, nine dollars a mug, and it might be hard to make a good amount of money from doing that. But, you know, if you if you don't have enough sales from Etsy or you don't know um, how to do Amazon yet, that might be a way to do it as well. So yeah, like I said, I've been shipping some of my replacements really fast. So um, I did have a couple of products that just didn't get printed right. And I thought, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to print a replacement because they really want the replacement fast. So I went and got a refund for the product that got misprinted. And then I just printed and shipped um, from my house. And I used Canada Post. And um, it actually wasn't, you know, it's not cheap to ship from Canada. Um, that's one of the, the drawbacks of this is that it's not cheap shipping from your house and it's not cheap shipping from Canada. But um, it was 9 bucks Canadian to ship or, or maybe more like, no, it was more like $11 to ship. Um, but of course it is cheaper and faster to do it myself. So I kind of take that into account, so... All right, so let's talk about the drawbacks, the cons, because there are a few. So a lot of people get excited about the idea of 
you know, printing your own mugs. And you kind of get this idea that you'll sit there and you'll just have this big stack of mugs and then it's going to be fun and you can save a lot of money. So if you're making sales, you know, on, on Facebook or something like that, you just go and print them in your basement and ship them out and everything's going to be peachy keen. But that's not exactly how it works. This is not a computer-based business, printing your own mugs. It is, it takes up space. You know, even if it doesn't take up that much space, I mean, you're not, you know, it's not like a commercial kitchen or anything like that. But it does take up a fair amount of space, especially if you want to do this big time. So I've basically got a corner of my basement that I wasn't using for anything, and I'm kind of fortunate in that I have like a full detached bungalow. You know, there's four of us living in it, but I have pretty much the run of the basement. So I have lots of room that I can take up, uh, and it wasn't being used for anything already. Um, not everybody has that, and especially if you live in a shared accommodation or you have roommates or you live, you know, in a smaller place, you you may not be able to actually make this work for you. Now, I mean, in terms of how much space does it take up? Probably, I mean, less than you'd think, but more than you'd expect, which is not very not a satisfying answer, but the truth is that... Um, if you're only doing one or two, yeah, it doesn't take up a lot of space. But what takes up a lot of space is, um, you know, the blank mugs themselves, right? Each box of mugs is like the size of like three computers side by side or, you know, a, a large laser printer. And they're not light. Um, so if you, you got to drag those suckers in, you got to lift them up, carry them in. And, and of course, you got to source them from somewhere. So... There's a lot of like logistics that go into this, and it's not just, okay, get the equipment to print mugs, come home, start printing. There is packaging. So if you're, if you're shipping mugs out, you have to find good packaging. Now, it, it, it turns out that um, I've been shipping in 4-inch uh, by 4-inch by 4-inch boxes, and that works pretty good. I put a little bit of bubble wrap in there. And these are chunky, like, corrugated cardboard boxes, so they do work pretty good. Um, but I'm sure that I'm going to find some breakage. And, I mean, it's just part of the nature of, of selling online is that things are going to break. I may have to uh, make that a little bit bigger. I may have to spend a little bit more money on the packaging to, uh, to make sure the products don't get broken on the way to the customers. Uh, and that's going to cost more money. It's going to mean I have to send them in a larger box with more material, and it's going to take more time. And the material itself is going to take up at least as much space as the mugs do. So not only do you have to, you know, have mugs to print, but um, you know, when the mug box is empty and you've got all these printed mugs, you've got to put those mugs into their own individual box, <laughs> which means that you've got to go out and buy boxes, and you've got to store them, and then you need tape, and you've got to store the tape, and then you're going to need labels. So all of these materials require a supply. You've got to monitor how much you've got of it and don't run out. Because if you run out of labels, you're kind of screwed. Um, or if you run out of boxes, you really can't ship anything out without a box. So there is quite a bit of logistics, and it does take up a decent amount of space. It also takes more time than you'd think. And time and space and money, um, of course, are those things that people don't have a lot of, especially when you're getting just kind of getting your feet wet, getting started. And that's why this is not a beginner-friendly technique. Uh, but we'll talk about ways to make this work for you and when it, how it would be good. So, of course, it takes up space. It does take a decent amount of time. And it, it costs a fair bit of money to buy good quality equipment to, to do this. And I'll tell you how much money it cost me um, when we get to that part of the episode here. So now in terms of how much time does it take? Well, um, so it's not just, you know, you're not just um, slapping a, a thing on a mug and then putting it in the press. 
So there's an, an entire production flow that you got to kind of think through. So you got to print the design, um, but first you got to actually get the design and kind of position it on a, on the software. So the the printer that I got came with software. Now this doesn't take that much time, um, so it's actually really not that big of a deal. But it's it's not you know something that doesn't take any time at all. So um, that's why it is much more efficient for you to print the same product over and over and over again than it is to print different products. So if you have to sit and design a product and then print it onto the sublimation paper and then sublimate each individual order, that's going to take a fair bit more time than it would for you to print 36 of the same product. Because if you you know, sit and think about how much time it takes to position, you know, the design on the page, you know, you're adding a lot of time to that. Um, probably doubling your time, actually. And that's not insignificant. So if you're doing individual orders, yeah, you're going to spend a fair bit of time doing each order. Um, plus there is the whole, you know, printing out a shipping label, packaging the product up individually, and then actually taking it to the post office to ship. So all of these things are things that take time. And um, again, that's that takes away from other things that you could be doing that will make you money. Um, so we'll talk about, again, ways to make this work for you and make you more money. Um, but yeah, and especially when you first get started, you're going to actually waste mugs because you won't really know what you're doing. Uh, when I first got all of this equipment, I started printing, and I think I wasted about 20, maybe maybe as many as 25 mugs. Some of those were black mugs. I was trying to do, um, like, black mugs, and I, I bought some that have this white patch on them, and you just you sublimate into the white patch to make an all-black mug. Now, it didn't work <laughs> at all, so it was a waste of time but it was an interesting experiment and uh, now I have a bunch of black mugs that basically are, are worthless to me so I'm probably just gonna have to sell them or just give them away if I can um, so let's talk about ways to make this work so um, the way that I think that would you know really make this effective is printing your own fulfilled by Amazon products that is to me just makes the most sense printing one-off orders is just it's very time consuming right um, for me I'm using order desk to, to fulfill a lot of customized orders um, I sell a lot of 15 ounce mugs from order desk I also sell the two-tone you know the ones with the black handle and the black inside they look really good but I don't you know I don't have any way to print those from home and if I'm going to be if I if I want to print those from my house, then I got to stock them as well. And then if you're doing 15 ounce mugs, it means you need a bigger box, and it means you need like different packaging material. There is just a whole host of reasons not to print different sizes of mugs in your house, or even if you're running a business, um, doing your own products. It still is it complicates things greatly. So. That's why I don't do this as my own, you know, for the one-off orders, the customized orders that I that I ship out. I'm going to be using Custom Happy because they work, they're good. Um, right now they're they're printing fast and they they do a good job. So this is going to be strictly for fulfilled by Amazon because it is actually much harder for me to get good quality Amazon stock in a timely fashion. It's been one of the things that has really dragged my business down, especially this year, or this last year anyway. So one thing that you can do, and this is something that I had never even considered. In in four years, I never even thought of this. But I did think of it this year, and I have started testing it. Um, so sending Amazon FBA to your home country. So if you live in Canada, it's pretty easy to do. If you live in Australia, it's probably pretty easy to do. The UK, same thing. So you can send um, mugs to Amazon FBA from 
your home country and it's really really easy to do um, you can print the labels directly from Amazon of course um, this is what you do if you sell FBA normally you have to download the shipping label which is pretty cheap to do except you just give it to your supplier but in this case you don't give it to your supplier you actually box the product and you put the shipping label on the box and then you just ship it so I'm using UPS um, but I think you can use other suppliers um, so probably UPS would be the easiest way to do it Canada does have uh, sort of Canada FBA Amazon Canada has a deal with UPS where they can you know you sellers can ship products to Amazon for cheap um, it's pretty good so that's what I was using now I don't know why it's taking quite a while for those products to get checked in um, but it is kind of funny that the Amazon warehouse that I ship to is about an hour and a half away from me like it's really close <laughs> so realistically I probably could have just brought it to them but I don't know if they take deliveries at the door in that sense so I ended up just shipping it um, and the beauty is that UPS will pick up from my house directly from my house so I I actually had a scheduled pickup today I was gonna ship out my first three boxes and I missed it um, because you know I I said come between noon and 5 p.m. and they came at 1130 so I was I was out <laughs> I thought I had plenty of time and my wife called me and she's like uh, UPS is here uh, what do I do and I was like crap so I I zipped home but they were gone by the time I got there so I was an, I was annoyed I kinda took it out of my wife a little bit it wasn't her fault so I had to apologize but I was like okay I'll do this again and I'll actually be you know I'll, I'll make sure I don't leave the house I actually called the driver and she told me yeah I'll, I'll be there around 11 o'clock so it was kinda cool um, that you know they're flexible like that but yeah you gotta think about these little logistical things if you're actually shipping your products out the door yourself now on the other hand once you get a workflow going I think you'll find that it's pretty easy to do so um, testing FBA in your home country um, sending FBA products to the US it is difficult to do if you don't live in the United States um, I actually am kinda lucky in that I, I live pretty close to the border so it doesn't cost me that much money to ship across the border um, it's it's not cheap but it's not super expensive and I've had to sort of sit there and weigh you know I actually spent a lot of time like crunching numbers to figure out how much this is gonna cost me and I was like okay it does make sense for me to do this just barely though so basically the benefits are that um, I can ship with better packaging and I can kinda do my own branding but I'm not really saving a lot of money because of the extra expense of crossing the border now if you live in the US obviously you can save loads of money um, because you can ship your own you can print for about a dollar you can print the mug for a dollar and the packaging is maybe another 75 cents so you got under two dollars right there and you can get good packaging which means less breakage and you know you're basically printing it for about half or less of what you would normally pay to to print that product um, now on the other hand if you hire somebody to do it again you're you're spending more money on this and you probably won't make as much money um, or you won't make as much profit but you know the the benefits of getting it there faster can make up for that so there's a lot of things to think about when you're printing your own products but it is something that I'm gonna keep doing and I'll see if I can make this more efficient and of course whatever I find out I will bring it to you good folks so here is a quick list of everything that you need to print your own you know coffee mugs at home and I'll talk about other things other ways you can do printing at home that are not white coffee mugs so you do need a good sublimation printer and I would not recommend a conversion so technically speaking you can take almost any Epson printer and convert it 
to a sublimation ink, uh, I don't recommend it because they're not made for that. Um, I paid $850 for a sublimation printer and it is designed for sublimation. It has print heads that are designed for it and it has good quality ink that comes with it and it was easy to install and it's easy to use. So I would recommend um, Sawgrass makes an excellent printer. The Sawgrass 500 is what I've got. It works fantastic. It, it prints flawlessly. It, it prints fast. It's a good printer. Then you're going to need a mug press. You, you can do the actual pressing in the oven with oven wraps, but I don't like it. So I'm using a mug press because it's, it's just a better quality way of doing things and it's just more consistent. So um, again, I paid a fair bit of money for that. I paid $750 for the mug press. So you can see I'm, I'm into this already with those two things, well over $1,500. And that was just with two items, not everything else. So then you need, of course, boxes. So I like to use the 4x4x4 four by four by four boxes, the corrugated ones. They're pretty cheap. Um, bubble wrap, tape, lots of like ordinary printer paper uh, and you're gonna have to have a place to source labels and you're gonna have a place have to have a place to source white sublimation blanks so you can't sublimate on a coffee mug unless it has a special coating on it and not every coffee mug has the coating so you can't just go to the store and buy a bunch of white coffee mugs they probably won't work or if they work, they're not going to look quite quite right. So it is definitely advisable to buy the actual sublimation blanks. And if you don't have a supplier near to you, then you're going to have to ship it to yourself. I kind of lucked out. There's somebody that's just around the corner from me that sells these sublimation blanks. And so I went and I'm like, okay, how many do you have? Like, I'll buy everything you've got for these white mugs. So that's what I did. Then, of course, you need heat tape. Um, you're going to need probably some kind of... Uh, you're going to need labels because you're going to have to label the products. And you're going to need uh, a regular, probably a laser jet printer. So laser jet printers are... They're not cheap either, right? They're, they're not, you know, $850, but buying a good laser jet printer is going to set you back a couple hundred bucks. Um, all in all, just the printing... Just the printers and the the mug press probably going to put you at two grand. So if that sounds like it's a lot of money, then printing your own products from home is probably out of your reach at the moment. For me, it was a pretty easy justification to invest two thousand um, bucks because I I can print hundreds and I have already printed hundreds of mugs. So uh, if you want to do this at scale, of course, you're going to want to buy your blanks from China. You're going to want to hire people to run the system. And you're going to have to experiment with packaging to get the best you can. So I have been using, of course, the 4-inch the four by 4-inch four by 4-inch boxes. So funny story, um, I bought 25 larger boxes. And I thought, okay, so these 4-inch boxes, if I fit them three high and four deep they should fit in this this size of box but what I didn't do was measure the stupid box after it was actually put together and it's not four inches it's four and a half inches and that half an inch kinda of makes a big difference so they didn't fit in the box and I had to go out and buy another 25 boxes that were bigger but on the other hand um, the, the box that I have now is a perfect size and, it, and they, they fit in there quite well but it was just a, a pain in the butt, you know, to try and find a supplier. And I, I visited a bunch of stores to see if they had any boxes. I ended up buying them online and having them shipped directly to my house. Um, so that is one thing you can do, but you have to know which box to get. And, and I'm using an 18-inch by 14 by 14-inch box. So they fit in there pretty good. But we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I may have to... Uh, make better packaging if I find I'm getting a lot of breakage, but for the most part, I have tested the boxes I'm using. I've actually put the mug in there and dropped it, and they survived. So 
I'm hoping that that's a good <laughs> that's a good test. We'll see if it if it really works. You know, when it actually gets to Amazon, but I think it, I think it'll work at least better than it's working for me now. Um, so that's that's the basics, guys. Now, like I said, I have got a, a larger, more in-depth system for this, and I will be recording all of it, and I will be adding it to my print-on-demand course, which you can find at salesondemandshow.com forward slash AZ. So we'll see you next week. We'll be talking about hiring virtual assistants and hiring employees to expand your business. I'm excited about that. See you in the next week. Cheers.